Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia. Today I'm talking to Ijaz Rapper. Hi there, Ijaz, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, and you? Very you good. good, very good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking to you about your experience of setting up a clubfoot clinic in India. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing about all that's been involved, all that you've done, and some of the experiences that you can share with others around the world on this uh, great project that you've been working on. Um, but before we do that, maybe would you like to introduce yourself to everybody um, so that we can know a little bit about you, uh, what you get up to, and what you do in India? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, before starting my introduction, I would like to, you know, thank you being, you know, uh, I'm part of this MOOC, so you know, I feel you know very happy about it. So I'm Ajaz Rather, by profession I'm a physiotherapist. So you know, I'm working with ICS from last nine years. So yeah, if we, you know, our work was mainly related to prosthetics and orthotics. But now from last couple of years, you know, we have been involved in club foot and uh, you know other things. So club foot is, you know, has is a priority for us. So we have we are doing it from last two years in collaboration with Cure International India. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two years ago, did you set up a new club foot clinic with Cure International at the at, at a location where you work? Yeah, actually, uh, we in collaboration with Cure International India. Uh, Cure International India is the implementing partner. So in collaboration with Ministry of Health. Jammu and Kashmir and in Chhattisgarh. We are supporting some club full clinics, some uh, club six clinics in uh, Jammu and Kashmir and some clinics in Chhattisgarh, you know, it's central part of India. Okay, so you're, so you're running quite a, a number of clinics all around the country. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. We are not directly running it, but in collaboration with Cure International India. Right, okay. And you yeah. are based at an ICRC physical rehabilitation centre, is that right? Not really, you know, the club food clinics are in different hospitals. It's not in the physical rehabilitation centers. Physical rehabilitation centers are separate and club food clinics are at separate places. Okay, okay. So the yeah. club food clinics are running out of local hospitals um, exactly. as, a, as a kind of national project in collaboration with Cure International. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Okay, so yeah. that sounds like a nice national program for developing a club foot clinics. It's very young, you've only been working on that exactly. for two years. Yes, so can yes, you tell yes. us a little bit about the story of how, uh, how you kind of set up the program um, and what was involved in that? Yeah, but actually when we started it was 2015 August. You know, uh, in all the hospitals, in majority of the hospitals, one city for the club food was already followed. You know, the treatment part was already followed. What was lacking is, you know, the corrective part. Corrective part was, you know, maintenance part was not followed. Corrective part was perfectly followed. But what was lacking was the maintenance part. Because the children, after the treatment part, they need to be properly followed in the form of braces. And, you know, they had to come regularly for the follow-up. That was not being properly followed. So what we did is, in collaboration with Cure International, we provided the braces free of cost to the children, which was earlier not, you know, possible for them to get. If at all they get it, the cost was very huge. So we are providing braces free of cost. So that is the main, you know, crux of it. So that's, yeah. So how many children... Um are you seeing um, in your clinics? It varies from clinic to clinic actually. In, uh, you know, the major bone injury, we have one of the hospitals here which is, you know, uh, dedicated for bones and joints. There we are getting good number of patients, you know, from last one, one and a half year, in that very hospital we have enrolled more than 200 cases of children. But in other hospitals which are not dedicated for bones and joints, which are like general government hospitals, there we are getting, you know, uh, weekly maybe uh, five, six patients in a week on an average, yeah. Okay, so, so, so it completely differs quite significantly uh, depending on your location. Um, do you feel like you're reaching, reaching all the children that you can reach in the areas that you do have clubfoot clinics? 
No, I would say not at the moment because you know club food service are still still centralized. You know they are not in peripheral areas at the moment. But the need of the R is like people living in uh, the periphery. They are not maybe they are not aware about the services what we are offering here. So it, they are still centralized. Once you know we reach to the periphery, we the number of uh, children with you know we may uh, it, the number will rise actually. Okay, uh, but yeah. you but you must be seeing success with now that you're doing more work on the maintenance with the braces. Um, are you seeing some good results from that? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, treating the child with you know ponseti serial casting, it's just five or six weeks of treatment, and the important part of his bracing, which is which which needs to be followed up to four or five years of age, and soon after we provided you know in collaboration with cure the braces the results are quite high you know the, the success rates are very high which was not earlier because uh, parents were not able to afford it or they were not able to come for the regular follow up so now since our intervention things have improved a lot okay so you've seen um you must have seen quite a lot of um i don't know um Cases that uh, weren't followed right through that were more um, sort of like older children, maybe, and um, some neglected cases of club, club foot. Have you seen more of those come through as you've set up your specialist clinics? Yeah, we are actually getting some cases, you know, which are neglected ones, especially, for example, I don't know if you have seen in one of my WCPT presentation, uh, the club foot, the child was 11 year old. And we still followed the Ponseti protocol, and we are regularly getting such kind of cases. Not very high, but you know, in between, we are getting neglected club foot cases, which are being still treated by Ponseti. So we are not, you know, going for surgical uh, treatment. We are first, we are initially following the Ponseti, and even if they need surgical intervention, minor surgical intervention at the later stage, but at least the big surgery is being avoided if we are following the serial casting in the initial stage. Um, so you've set up the clinic, in, the, the clinics, and the service in the last two years. What are the challenges that you've faced? Okay, challenge. Okay, yeah. the main challenge we are facing at the moment is, uh, you know, uh, the treatment, the uh, maintenance part is, you know, it is four to five years. So patients have to come. Patients or the parents have to come. They have to you know, travel a long distance, they have to come after every week, every two weeks or three weeks, something like that. So that is one of the challenges. Plus, uh, do not rate at the moment is not high what it should be, what is expected from the, you know, doctors at the moment. It should be at least more than 90, but it is not happening at the same pace. It's around 20% or 25% maximum. So, me rate is not very, you know, up to the mark. And at the same time, uh, sometimes we get some cases non-compliance because, you know, wearing a brace is not an easy thing. So parents sometimes, you know, uh, intentionally or unintentionally, uh, you know, uh, some children come with recurrence. Not the percentage is very low, but still we get some patients due to non-compliance who have recurrence of club foot and in some cases some people who are rich they want you know something uh, innocent remedy because it's a long-term process they need instant remedy because they are rich sometimes they what what they do is they go out for surgical intervention they feel like we can get it treated with surgery and they go for surgery and one more challenge which is at the moment uh, which we are facing is Scoring is not being done by the treating doctors. It is, you know, most of the time done by counselors, which should be actually done by the doctors. So these are the some challenges which we are facing in regular, you know, club foot clinics. Yeah, and I guess for you, uh, with such a young service, I mean, two years is a very young service. Um, um, you've got a long way to go to develop the service, haven't you? Um, and overcoming these challenges. And I and I'm guessing. So if we go through the things you've talked about with the tenotomy, um, that's just a case of bringing in more surgeons. Um, I'm guessing to help you with that part of the 
management protocol. Um, what about, and, and then as well with um, the Pirani or the scoring, the outcome scoring, that's, that's a case of, I guess, just educating people to or trying to make the service more consistent in, in the way that um, all the healthcare providers in the interdisciplinary team are working with the children. I'm guessing that's, that's education that you need to do there. Of course, we, you know, again, in collaboration with QR, what we are doing is on regular intervals, we are sending to sending the doctors, you know, for refreshers training. We are sending them for the refreshers training so they get to know what exactly they are supposed to do. But at the same time, doctors keep on, uh, you know, getting shifted from one hospital to another hospital. That is another, you know, I forgot to mention that challenge. That is another challenge what we are facing. If you are training 10 doctors or 12 doctors in a year, at, at the end of the year, they are shifted to some other hospital. So it another becomes, you know, difficult. But we keep on sending the doctors for training. So it's helping us, you know, uh, in their routine clinics. Yeah, so I guess that's a case of consistently running uh, training sessions for the doctors and for yeah. other healthcare professionals. But... Um, Coming back to the client side of things, um, so how do, with the with the um, your clients who have to travel a long way and regularly, I can totally see how how that's such a massive challenge for people. Are there any way? How can people overcome that, or is there anything that you can do to help the people that struggle with the travel and everything? What would you What would you recommend to other clinicians that are facing that challenge with their clients as well? You know, the good thing about the club foot is you can see the immediate results. You know, a parent can see the immediate results of the child who comes for the treatment of club foot. I think that is the only thing if, if, if you have a good doctor at the clinic and you can show the good results to a parent, that is the motivation for the parent. I can give an example. At the moment, we have a 16-year-old female, idiopathic unilateral club foot. We, it was like she was walking on the lateral side of the foot. She had a big callus on it. Now she is coming. Initially, we thought it's impossible to do the Ponseti. But from last two, two and a half months, we have been regularly doing the Ponseti. And now today, we are now, you know, short of tenotomy. The rest of the things are almost done. So the, if the parent is, you know, able to see the change with the treatment, that motivates them. That's the only that's the only you know magic of Ponseti. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess if you can share with parents, if they can see the results of other cases as well that are sort of further down the line, of that they can see exactly where ultimately their child will be. Um, so that they're not just watching the progress of their own child, but they're seeing that su the successes that you've had in the clinic with other children as well. I guess that's quite a motivating thing to bring help um, bring exactly. the children back in. It, it helps, actually. It helps. You're right. You have touched the nerve, actually. Yeah, we, good. We, <laughs> we have been doing it because, you know, those children who are, who are already treated, they come for the follow-up and we grab that opportunity and, you know, we take, it, we take the opportunity and we show it to other parents who are around and we, you know, we, they talk to each other and they, you know, they get motivated. So it is very important, actually, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so I guess that's the same with the compliance issue as well. And, and if, if the parents and the carers are well-educated about the potential outcomes for their children, does that help with the compliance, with the braces and things? Yeah, it is actually, if you have a good counsellor who counsels the parents, you know, that is the crux. Because the most important part in club foot is, you know, uh, the job of the counsellors. If parents are counselled well, if they are told that if you are not, you know, uh, wearing the brace as prescribed, then your children will have relapse and, you know, they will have a lifelong disability. So the, we, have a, we have got good counsellors who, you know, counsel parents on a regular basis, on every follow-up. So that makes them going, actually, yeah. Have you so alongside the counsellor? The counsellor is really important for the compliance of the child right. and the parents. Have you any other tips for helping that for other clinicians that are setting up services? Uh, 
for other clinicians you know the important part of is we often what we do is we often ask for the night bracing if we ask them you should not only concentrate on night bracing you know if once it is done for 23 hours a day then it's they they mainly go for night bracing what we can we, we can we can tell them is it's not only during the night time it's during the uh, nap time as well because most of the time children during the night time when they are wearing the braces they get disturbed they lose their sleep and what they do is they sleep during the day and parents don't wear the braces during the day if they are using it during the day as well you know children gets associated with it and you know the, the success rate gets good so it is you know one of the good tips for other clinicians if they follow this regime not only the night night time they should wear the braces during the nap time during the day as well mhm good okay and as a as a f- you know you've been working in this new service now for 2 years um and you you've obviously faced a lot of challenges setting it up and 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 you've done a very good job of that so have you got any advice for clinicians other clinicians that are setting up new services um from your experience yeah in my experience what i'm hearing for other colleagues and all i have learned that uh, many of the clinicians what they are doing is uh, of they follow the pond city only up to 2 years of age and after 2 years what they do is they they go for the surgery but you know the the uh, the magic of one city is you can do it even 10 11 12 years of age so my uh, my request to them would be you should try it you know before going for the major surgery you should try the you know conservative treatment before going for the surgery even after going the surgery after going the surgery you will lose many of the functions of the foot so you are dealing you know you are uh, playing with the life of a child if you are dealing with conservatively go for it rather than doing it surgically and i think that nicely um backs up uh, or it nicely corresponds with i talked to tim nun and rick gardner the uh, two surgeons in ethiopia recently and they are saying the same thing you know you can with the older child you can use the ponseti and casting up until uh, much older um and you can avoid surgery so that's a nice thing to hear that you're having good success with that as well um i think that's a really good thing to hear um to avoid to avoid surgery if we can yeah of course of course of course we are getting very good results actually for you know what i have observed is for you know these older children first 3 4 casts are a little difficult you know once you are done with 3 or 4 casts the foot automatically automatically becomes supple so then you have to grab it from there so you have to be little patient with this you know if you can do it conservatively be little patient then you can have a success sounds great it sounds really good and and i admire the work that you're doing um i am i'm i imagine you there are a lot of children that you can reach out there still um so i wish you all the best with that is there anything that we haven't talked about today that you would like to share with others out there other clinicians that are working with individuals with clubfoot with children with clubfoot or anyone that's thinking about setting up a new service yeah maybe a couple of things you know for an ideal clubfoot clinic there should be some uh, you know if you are planning to do something new in an ideal club foot clinic there should be some things which need to be taken care of like you should have good treating professionals like doctors or physiotherapists or whoever you should have good counselors who can counsel the parents that's very important part of it because the long term follow up needs to be there the role of counselors is very it's paramount third is you need to have braces of different sizes so sometimes when you don't have braces of different sizes you know then you are managing in the old one you know then the treatment is not effective as you want and at the same time you need to have uh, you know you need to follow the pirani scoring very important one if you want to see the progress of the treatment you need to see it if you want to see when you are going to for the tenotomy you have to follow the pirani scoring if you are not following the pirani scoring you will not be able to know when to do the tenotomy and when not and at the same time it will also tell you whether the patient is or the child is you know compliant is he wearing the brace properly or not it's again pirani can tell you 
when the child is on brace pirani can tell you so please go for the prani and you know record it on regular basis so that is you know there are some of the tips which i would like to share with you Awesome. I think um, there's some really nice tips and some really just a few simple things for people to think about, which uh, I hope people will be able to take into their um, current practice and also into any service that they might be setting up. So, um, Ida, thanks for talking to me today. Um, it's been really good to hear your experiences where you are. Um, I'm sure everyone, you know, everyone has a, a the context in which everyone is is different um, with a different set of clients and a different set of challenges but some of the challenges are always the same and I think it's good to share those and to hear from you who's been through a, a setting up a recent new service is, is um, really useful so thank you for that. Um, Edges, is there anywhere we can see about your work or your service? Is there any anywhere online that we can look up more about what you do? Uh, I have recently, you know, in WCPT, I had a presentation on neglected clubfoot. So on WCPT website, I have one of in the case study on neglected clubfoot, bilateral idiopathic neglected clubfoot case study that uh, that can be seen on that. And one more thing, I recently took part in uh, WHO, World Health Organization's Gate Summit. And, uh, you know, they are working on some assistive devices. They have shortlisted 50 out of those. They are now shortlisted 25 and club foot foot abduction brace is one amongst them so i have a snapshot as well on club foot on who website as well if you would like to have a look it is available on there as well that's great and i think we can also um see look up cure international who you work with um online uh, they have a great yeah. website which shares all the work they do which is really good to have a have a look exactly. at yeah. exactly 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 Okay, um, thanks for talking to us today. It's been a real pleasure um, and thank you for your time and thank you for all the tips that you've shared. Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure.